All right, I'm excited. We've got some uh, superstar legends here in the making and have done so much for this entire profession. And the one thing I can say is Larry is incredible at sales because he married Taylor. So that alone right there just tells me that he's phenomenal at sales. So no one can argue. So anything that happens after this or is said, right, you just – you know, people are just going to believe it. Like, oh. Thank you. Good. So, well and, done. Well done. You, you know our uh, our good buddy, Tom Chanel. Somebody yeah. say hello to Tom Chanel if you're watching this live. If you're listening to the podcast, just listen along. Hey, right? His son's birthday was yesterday. Yeah, know? it was. Yeah, good old Tom. We're in Amsterdam. And I think he said it on stage. He's like, I've seen the movie before with Rob and his wife, Jenea. And I'm like thinking, you know, good old Tom, like it's going to be this compliment. And he says to me, he's like, it was called Beauty and the Beast. I'm like, Tom, <laughs> man, come on. That's too far. So good old, good old shout out to, to Tom to know. But uh, we've got a good mutual friend and and Dan McCormick. And oh, he's yeah. always, he's always raved about you, Larry. And uh, just your experience and what you've done. Uh, you guys have been friends forever. And and he was one of my initial, initial, one of my two initial mentors when I started in this profession where I felt like he kept he kept teaching me how to compress this time. I've been in the industry for 14 years, but it feels like 30 because I get to learn from legends like him and yourself. And then Taylor, we got to meet several different times, right, at, at A&MP and yeah. other fun events and so it's been fun to to get to know you both but i'm excited to talk a little bit shop a little bit of training but before we do that what is the very first international trip you guys are going to do after all this this chaos or maybe yeah. you guys are going anyway yeah what's our first international trip we are going to do after all of this craziness i mean <sighs> Probably to, probably to Germany. Yeah, Germany, and and because we have a lot of friends over there, and business associate Germany, uh, probably Germany and Spain and Italy, and then obviously we'll cop it off with Paris. That's wow. Yeah. Go big or go home, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it'll be fun. It'll be fun. And now, now, we have friends there all over there, so it's it'll be great to be, spend time with them. Now I keep yeah. trying to convince him he's going to take me to the Maldives, but you know that's like that's. A, that's a long plane ride. I've done a lot of long plane rides. <laughs> that one night you got to really get me for, but I'll do whatever she wants. You know that. Yeah, that that's definitely a first class plane flight where you just get knocked out and sleep, and then you're good. Yeah, I was supposed to be in Bora Bora leaving in three weeks, but we decided to push it off till next year because you got to get tested three days before you go. So we're like, geez, what if like we get tested, and we can't even go? Like so. Yeah. Exactly. We'll push that off, but well, we're gonna dive in here d deep into some of these concepts and principles because I think 50 years of experience is a decent amount of experience of seeing things that have changed and and things that haven't changed, and you 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 have this unique perspective on that, and then Taylor being around it as well, you've got a unique perspective seeing right from your opinion, okay, well, I like this, I don't like this, and you guys could be able to work with some of the top leaders all around the world and help coach and train them. But before we do that, let's just really, really important, I think it's important we tell everybody this, you have a brand new book that finally, finally, well overdue, right? You had cassettes back in the day, those were incredible. Some of you that are listening don't even know what cassettes are, but you had incredible cassettes back in the day for personal development. And then finally, finally, I think it was Taylor's doing, she's pushing you to get this book out and done. So tell us a little bit about this book and where people can find it. And we're going to dive into some of these concepts and principles. Uh, well, they can go to themillionairetraining.com. So we're going to be launching a, uh, a free book club. So you can kind of get registered for that. We're going to be doing some stuff that's really revolved around these concepts uh, and then just go straight from there and order the book from Amazon. So it's, a, it's, it's just a little two-step process there. Makes it fun. So you mentioned, I'm just going to, I'm just, I have to say this because yeah, you, you talked you, about Dan. You, you, you talked about Dan and I have to, I, I have to take the moment to show you this right here. The uh, book is, is so exciting because it's not it's not just the personal. It's everything from personal development to application to history 
uh, it's it's a very 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 it's not a one time read and done. It's a one it's a study study study, and each time you get something new out of it. It's it's remarkable. I'm just so proud of it because uh, people are really getting a lot from it. So he um so he's he sent it he had the he had some of these old pictures, and I had to share this because Dan kept he's kept everything. And that was like Larry's very first car in his the gold Cadillac. And, Larry, and actually, Dan had those photos. And he's got the picture of his very first check from Herbalife, like one penny. One penny. He's got the. Check. He still has it. Like he, I think he could be a, a historian in and of himself. <laughs> he's he's so he's so great. Yeah, him and Ron Henley together, man. They've got everything. Everything. <laughs> they got they got all the goods and all the info. Well, with everything that's changed. Right. I mean, social media didn't exist. And then even when it did exist, I remember I was taught right from all these old school leaders like, don't do social media. It's the devil. Stay away from social media. You can't build relationships. You can't do this. But I think, you know, certain people, they they don't adapt to change. And what I love the most about your guys' trainings is you take this 50 years plus of experience, but then you take these timeless principles and you apply them to the modern day era. So maybe talk about some of the timeless principles and, and some of the application to how to build and do this in a modern day era, which we know, especially during, if you're watching this live during the turbulent times, you know, there were people's businesses right now that did better than ever because the way they were set up following the concepts and principles you guys teach. And then there were others that were completely smashed and are trying to figure out how to reinvent themselves. Hint, go get the book and you'll learn. But drop, drop some nuggets of wisdom and tell us some of those concepts and principles. Well, I think, you know, I mean, you, you there, was, there was a lot of rabbit trails that I wanted to jump off on as you were talking there. But I will say that, you know, whenever you think about social media and you talk about social media, sometimes people don't realize we've had social media with us forever. And, you know, whenever you go back to Larry 50 years ago, um, 53 years ago, whenever he started as the long-haired hippie construction worker, you know, he was mailing out postcards, you know, hey, got a business out opportunity. Out of the phone book. And, and, and mailing out from, I mean, some people may not even know what the phone book is, like the white pages, take the addresses out, you know, from, from A to Z. Here, you take it, you take A, A through C and I'll take D through F. And that was that was their social media. Whenever I started 28 years ago, my social media was business card flyers that I did on the cars, right? Because whenever you think about social media, it's really just about you know that we, we they everybody will relate to it like curiosity post. I mean that's what a postcard was a curiosity post, a business card flyer, a curiosity post, getting someone to raise their hand. So. We've had social media with us the whole time. It's just a matter of, of we've got it faster, quicker, better because we're using technology. But the concept of social media is still the same. It's still about getting someone to be curious enough to give you a phone call, to send you a text, to send you a message, to say, hey, tell me more about what you're doing. And if you think about faster, quicker, better, and Taylor's talking about social media has been with us forever. Some people's brain out there are just turning around upside down. What That would never work today. It's the same because of the principle. I remember having videos that we handed out. I, I remember fax broadcast. I, I remember the first conference calls. Okay, I remember the satellite broadcast. I mean, went through all of those errors. Those things are constantly changing. And the social media techniques that someone is using today is and what they're teaching today and building their platform on today, what a year ago was different, and it'll be different in another year from now. So you got to build on the principles and adapt to the so-called fax machine, adapt to to the, uh, the the messenger and everything else. You adapt to it, but the principles of what you build on, and then it's the way you talk to people about that. You only after get them to respond to you in some way. And uh, that was a very big lesson for us. And maybe you can elaborate on that, of how we went to Europe to prove this out. And, and, and you, we will proved it out to a billion two of sales last year in one company, proving this out and already have a 60% increase this year, this year on top of that. So these things have been proven out to put these two together. 
Well, you know, whenever we, you know, first of all, like those of you who don't know, this this was, this training was, this is a, we, we call it the audio cassettes, right? Uh -huh. It was it was actually recorded 40 years ago in February, right? This is the first time it's ever been in a book form. It's always been in an audio form. And this was actually in our distributor kits, you know, so there was no other training. There was no other coaching available. You got to think about that. Well, so whenever you look at all of these contributors, because we've got 18 different contributors that all started with Larry in Herbalife in the 80s, Jeff Roberti, for instance, um, $100 million man, even your your mentor, you mentioned him just a few minutes ago, Dan McCormick. Yeah. You know, he started Dan with Larry. Saman, Dan uh, Lisa Saman, Lisa Grossman. Lisa Gro all of these, like, a lot of people know them, but this basically social proofing, if you will, because we're documenting their stories and the legacies that they've built as these principles. But I will tell you this, you know, the journey for Larry and I, you know, started back really whenever we were teaching in, in 2009 and really, you know, always what we knew to be true. But people started saying, because that's about whenever social media really hit, and people like, oh, that's old school. Nobody wants to do that anymore, hmm. right? And, and I have to tell you, Rob, I mean, just to be really transparent, we started questioning, you know, is what we know to be true, is it still relevant? Is it still, is there still value there? Or, or has the industry outgrown this? You know, and we had, we really did question it. And so we started working over in Europe and we started working with a little focus group over in Spain through translation with, <laughs> with this company that Larry Hart stel, helped start 25 years ago now. And um, we started just implementing these concepts and people that had never done networking before, and social media really wasn't their thing, but they were doing it, we'll call it the old school way, but just using these concepts, and they started growing, and they started building, their teams started growing fast. Well, what happened was, is that Italy, the country next door, said, hey, what's Spain doing? Because we want to do what Spain's doing, because they're growing, yeah. better, right? And, and so, but what was interesting, Rob, is that it was a different demographic because over in Italy, the demographic was between 18 and 25 and that had never done network marketing. They had never, you know, uh, they didn't, they didn't know any concepts. So we started teaching these, these concepts, but what was different is they were implementing these concepts within their social media and they grew exponentially. And, and, and so whenever we saw that taking place, then we knew that we knew that we knew that the Sorry, real quick, you guys are cutting out just a little bit. If you guys can hear me, we got a freeze frame here and I'll keep going. So okay. the rest of you guys can, can hear as you're going. But I, I love what you guys are talking about. Yeah on how you've got these timeless concepts and timeless principles and applying it because I think all the time people what they're doing is is they're listening and they're hearing all these different trainings and their goal is is they hear these trainings is to find these shortcuts and in reality yeah there's some ways to find shortcuts but the shortcuts uh, many times what happens is and, and you guys are back now so I'll go back to you here in a second but many times it's like climbing the mountain of Mount Everest and call it the mountain of success of network marketing and they climb this little quick fix route. And then all of a sudden they're like, oh, well, that sounds good. They said to do it this way. And they take the gimmick and they go the other route. And they start climbing up. And then the next one and the next one and the next one. And because they don't just commit to these timeless principles to making it go, it's like starting over and over and over again. And that path that seems so long in the first place actually really was the shortcut. I mean, think about it. We can't make guarantees or promises. But so what if it took you six years to create a residual income that you never had to work another day in your life? Is that worth it? I mean, what else could you do? Yeah, there's things out there, but not that many things out there, especially with the minimal risk and investment that you have and support and everything else that goes along with it. So it's just giving a little bit of perspective on it, but you guys are good now. You had a little freeze frame there in for a second, but I know they want to hear from you, not me. So I'll let you get you keep going. In the one of the things here about what has happened in our space, and, and this is very, very important to understand, 
like Taylor said, starting at the at the beginning of the, about 2010, especially 2012, it started going like this, the direct sales market here in America, okay? And it followed internationally. And it was because of social media. It was because of being able to find people faster, quicker, better. But we talk about duplication in our space, okay? It isn't happening anymore because from 2012 to 2015, it grew like this in America, direct sales market. Since 2015 to now, it's doing this. Now, there may be a little bit the numbers come in for 2020 because of COVID. Who knows what's going to happen on that? But the, the pattern hasn't changed, okay? So we may have a new baseline, but the pattern hasn't changed. And so when you go into social media and people think that social media is, is the, the, god, the goddess, not the principles, okay, what happens is distributors always take the path of least resistance. Mm. Okay? What do I mean by that? If they think that this is faster, quicker, better, then they're going to go do that. So they have to go learn how to do social media before they do. And all distributors want to learn before they do because they don't want, they want to watch Arnold Schwarzenegger's Mr. Universe videos. <laughs> they don't want to do this because they take the path of least resistance. And by the time they learn these principles, the, 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 what the techniques are, and they don't build it on the principles, then what happens is it changes on them again. And so we haven't had real duplication. We've had addition. What do I mean? You get the social media platforms, the so-called influencers that we hear everything about, okay? God bless them all, but they get one who gets one, okay? Maybe you get some duplication, one who gets one that gets one, okay? You don't get multiplication. If you want to have multiplication in your business, then you've got to apply it in whatever technique you're using, postcards or Instagram, doesn't matter, okay? Whatever that is, if you build it on the principles and make that the goddess, make that the pedestal, because this other stuff is always going to change because it always has. It's that whenever you look, I mean, every interview that I did, you know, the common of the thread contributor. of the contributors right here, um, the common thread was they were students of these principles. Like yeah. they could repeat these words. They could probably be, Jeff or Bertie could probably do this verbatim. Dan McCormick. Dan McCormick. John I mean, like, Solander. They're, they're yeah. all, it's a crazy. And, but because if you think about it, and these guys are still active, they're number one, top 10 in their companies even today. There's a reason for that is because they've continued, they've had the foundation of the principles and they've evolved as times as technology has changed, they've been able to uh, roll with it and grow with the times. And that's not necessarily the case anymore because, you know, we, I've always, I've started to see that, you know, the average person, like, you know, I'm just a stay-at-home mom, right? I was just looking for $800, Larry, long-haired hippie construction worker, right? Just because, you know, you know, Rob, I mean, Dan told you this, this is the average person's best chance, right? But whenever we put all these things in front of them, learn more to do more, then it doesn't become the average person's opportunity anymore. We, we've now want them to be marketers before they're network marketers. And, and so we, we, whenever we give them that, those tools and we equip them with foundational principles, then they can do it anytime, anywhere, without all the, the marketing skills. If they just learn that that easy path to run on exactly what we what we were taught. We're big fans, and we use social media in a big way. We're big, big fans of it. We're not down on social media. It, it, it does change. And one of the reasons that it, as we're talking about it started going down since 2015, Taylor hit it on the head here, that because people are teaching social media their marketing techniques before they teach the principal techniques. It works. It works good. I mean, I tell you, people are making a lot of money doing that in an addition form. But network marketing companies are no longer competing with network marketing yeah. companies. Because in the network marketing space, the direct sales space, there's only 6 million people. And what has happened, yes, the social media distraction away from principles cause some of this. But the bigger part of this problem is that there's other opportunities available outside of network marketing today. Yep. 
it used to be if you wanted to a long-haired hippie i finished i never finished high school too shy to give the oral book report it was that kind of thing Taylor wanted to be stay-at-home mom to be a mom care versus daycare every contributor in this book your your mentor dan mccormick used to build tennis courts okay every one of us started out in what we would describe today as the gig economy okay there's six million people over here in the network marketing space there's 60 million over here in the gig world what am i talking about amazon lyft i'm talking about task rabbit i'm talking where a person can start today like we started all of us started no education no self-confidence no self-esteem no money no experience and we can start today and start making money okay well, now what's happened is the direct sales industry is competing with the gig world, okay? And they haven't adapted to three things. The audience, who they are, okay? There's a bigger audience. There's exact demographics of who's in that those demographics. The language that they speak to each other is the language we have to speak to them. And the behavior that goes with that, because most of these people in the 60 million, they don't want to go big or go home like us. They want, don't want to walk on hot coals. What they want is 500 to 1500 a month without disturbing their current lifestyle. They still want, yes, soccer games. We're going back to school, guys. We don't need to worry about that, okay? They still want the school events. They still want all the plays. They still want to do all the stuff that we do with our kids today that didn't happen before. They want that money without disturbing their lifestyle. And so when they have to come in and learn all these things, it works over here in the 6 million arena. It doesn't work the same over here in the 60 million arena. You know what's interesting is, <sighs> Frazier and I actually, you know, we asked this question when we were in Australia. We, we've ran our own event there the last couple of years. And we'll get back there, Australians, if you're tuning in. I know it's, it's delayed a little bit now with everything that's going on. But we'll get back there. We'll get back there. But the question was asked of what elaborate system people followed when they had success. We had all the top earners stand up. And I've asked this all over the world. And most of them, all over the world, wherever I asked this, in Australia it was the same. It was 95 plus percent of people said, I didn't follow an elaborate system. I took massive action. So here's my question because – right? We create these principles that you need to follow. And yeah, you got to follow a system, but, but people misinterpret system, right? And why do all of these leaders take a system that they never followed, never used, never implemented, never did to make it happen? And all of a sudden now, I don't know if it's their own insecurities or to justify or, or maybe just good intent and they think this is what's going to help. And they create a system that's so good, it sucks because it's so detailed. And it's so layered to go and validate exactly what you're saying that average person can't do it. I always say if you don't have a system that, you know, someone with a sales skill set on a scale one to 10, that's a one or two, bless their hearts, we love them to death. But, you know, as human beings, we love them to death, but they suck at selling. If they can't do it, your system sucks. It can't be go watch this training, go watch that training, go watch this training, go watch that training, and then come back. It's like it's it's training doesn't work, work trains. And this is coming from these guys who are phenomenal trainers. This is coming from me as a trainer. We're training you that it's, yes, it's learned, and then it's action, 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 and then it's learn, action, 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 action. It's not the kumbaya, learn, learn. I'm going to learn some more. I watched 72 Facebook Lives today. They were incredible, right? And that's why I love that your book gives so much application, and that's why it becomes more of a study companion rather than one of those good books you just read and you're like, I, I remember it was good. I don't remember one or two things. No, it's, it's take this book and actually implement the concepts and principles with your guys' experience. What would you say if someone were to come to you and say, and, and maybe you get a different answer at different times, but if someone were to say, what's the number one cause of failure in the network marketing profession based on, you know, both of your experiences, what, what would you say that you see as a commonality with whether it's leaders, teams, average distributor, just all across the board? I'll let Taylor go first on that. I have no idea what she's going to say, but I'm going to find out. Well, I, I mean, I think probably a combination of a couple of things is that I think a lack of activity and consistency because I think they are confusing the activity, meaning 
being on a, a web webinar or posting something is they're, they're cons they think that's their job description. And that's, that's just busy work. Because whenever you get down to the chase, the, the job description is onboard customers, onboard distributors. Daily. Every single day. No matter what rank you are. <laughs> you know, and so if you don't give that new person that way or that track to run on that allows them to get new customers, and it's just as simple as, as equipping them with how to tell a story and how to share what happened with them. And so many times they're looking for the magic words, the magic way to say it, the magic script. And, and it's, and that's not necessarily the case. So they, they become paralyzed. They go, okay, I don't know enough. I don't know enough about my product or service. So I need to, I need to know more so I can do more. I don't know enough about my comp plan. Um, so I can't recruit anybody because I don't know all the numbers and how all that works. So if I learn more about my comp plan, maybe I'll be able to recruit somebody in my business. And, and so to me, that's, to me, that's where the, the magic is, is they, they're, they're deceived into thinking what their actual job, job description truly is. And if they're not having those conversations every single day about their product or service or about their opportunity, they're not going to build or grow their business. And for me, I'm going to say, take a couple different things, shots at this. One of them is complexity versus simplicity, okay? And if it's complex, okay, the average person's best chance to be able to talk about here a few minutes ago, I got that from Jim Rohn 53 years ago. Most people, a lot of people don't know this, but the, my very first meeting that I attended in my life, okay, was the first time I was ever in a hotel in my life, and I came in there as I would call it undesirable, People had heard about hippies, but they hadn't seen one. But I was a working hippie. They okay? work on work all the time. And it would be like today having your negative brother-in-law there who's an accountant and a lawyer and having someone with the push cart with their tent on it and coming into the meeting. <laughs> That's what it was like. I was not <laughs> But Bobby DePew gave that meeting. And that night, the original strategist and tactician of our space, the guy that I've learned my stuff from, and the, there was a guest there that night that was joined the same night that I did, the same company, with Jim Rohn, okay? And Jim Rohn and I joined the same company the same night. Jim, 90 days later, was vice president of sales, and they took this undesirable hippie and shared these things with him, and I walked away with it, okay? But simplicity and, com and complexity, okay? But here's the real thing, the real issue, if you talk about success, leaders today don't know what success is. 60, you've got, you're going to go over here to this gig world where the 60 million people are, okay, 80% of them, the success is 500 to 1,500 a month. It's validated. It's facts. It's not just talk. It's not just a pitch. And they're talking to, to the wrong people about the wrong language and the wrong behavior. They do not recognize success. And 15% of the people over there don't want 500 to 1500 a month. They want 500 to $1,500 a week. And then 5% want 500 to 1500 a day. Guess what? They talk to the 5%, about 5% audience, 5% language, 5% behavior, and they can't understand. Look at me. Look at my Lamborghini. Look at how fast my, how big my house is. All wrong, <laughs> right language for the 6 million, okay? Shrinking audience, it's there and it's shrinking. But if you understand audience language and behavior, and we sh we got we we got this deal you know, wired as far as understanding that and sharing it with people, and the people have followed doing extremely well. I'm so excited about the results. Okay, the book is doing phenomenally well around the globe. It's just the book. It's just a sale. It's not a, when you sell a product or sign somebody up. That's just a person until they do something with it. You know, what Larry's always taught me that you only have to know a half a dozen things to have success. And, and you know, so whenever you think about, whenever you think about it and equate it to the sports, it really does make all the sense in the world because if you think about the, the world champion basketball, right, you know, um, with the Lakers. The right? Lakers, my favorite team, but no big deal. <laughs> I mean. You guys are cut. There you go. Right now, just a little bit. Now we're we're coming back. We're coming back. We're seeing those beautiful faces here. Almost. 
I can hear you guys a little bit, just just a little frozen, you know. This is what yeah. happens with the chaos in the world and everybody's on on right their devices all at the same time all around the world tuning in. We're back, I think. There, we can hear you guys. Now you're starting. There we go. Good. Thank you. Um, you know, think about what they do. Their their principles, their foundation is dribble, pass, shoot, right? And that's their that's their that's their principles. That's what they do. But whenever they started in little dribblers, what what are they teach them how to do? Dribble, pass, shoot. So if they learn those fundamentals, it's it's all a matter of how much you do it and how much you practice as to how good you can get. Everything else doesn't matter. Everything else, as long as you're practicing the fundamentals. And, and so if you learn just a half a dozen things that what we talk about, like, you know, just this audience thing, this thing right here, whenever you think about 80% and you think about saying the right language and speaking the right language, you know, so many times that people, they go out there and let's just say they're making $10,000 a month. If that's what they're talking to the long-haired hippie construction worker. Stay-at-home mom. Stay-at-home mom. They're not, I'm, I'm going to go, well, that's great for you, but what about me, right? So they're, they're speaking the wrong language to the wrong audience. But what if that $10,000 a month earning, and I'll use this as an example, what if, if they said, you know, I'm so excited. I mean, I don't know if this is something that's going to be interesting for you or not, but I mean, you know, me and Larry just got started doing this and, and you know, just yesterday I made an extra 50 bucks and it's, it's, I mean, that kind of, that kind of language and using that kind of analogy instead of talking up here and talking to the person that can actually hear what's being said, they go, how did you make $50 yesterday? $50 hmm. for, for somebody in this day and time could be life changing, right? It can pay, help pay a phone bill. And people forget that part. They forget what it really is to, you know, struggle, right? And they think they can't recruit anybody. They think they can't get anybody on their team if they're not making $10,000 a month. They don't think they're good enough. They don't think they have what it takes. And how, how, how do you get to $500, $1,500 a month, okay? It's simple, okay? Go get a customer a week. Okay? And I promise you that six months or a year, I don't care what your comp plan is, your product line is, you're probably going to be making 500 or 1500 But Most people will, will die. They'll, they'll lay down their, their firstborn for you if they can do that and keep their lifestyle and not disturb their family. How do you go into the 15% category of 500 to $1,500 a week? Okay? It's as simple as building a little team that wants to make 500 to 1500 a month. That's it. And how do you go to 500 to 1500 a day is by building a bigger team that wants to find people that wants to make 500 to 1500 a month without disturbing their lifestyle. Listen, this stuff is magic. It's gold and it's timeless and, uh, and it's working like magic. Well, I'm just thinking about a lot of things you guys just said. My head, same thing. It's like just going all these different directions, thinking this. You're talking the sports analogy. I'm thinking to... Um, John Wooden, right? Greatest college basketball coach of all time, right? You know, he starts out with teaching them how to put their socks on. Yes. Their socks and then tie their shoes. And they're thinking, what, what are you doing? What are you doing, man? What are you teaching this? And it's because, look, if you get blisters, you can't play. He's teaching them to make sure that they're getting their hair cut properly because he doesn't want them sweating too much and then putting their hands, you know, all over and touching the sweat. Now all of a sudden it's like there's slippery hands on the ball. And it's the same thing with Vince Lombardi, one of the greatest coaches of all time for football. When he starts right with the laces and the basics and how to hold everything like was so basic and it's mastering the mundane. It's successful. People just do the basics, but everybody's always trying to look for the shortcut. And just like you just said there at the end, Larry, I think a lot of most actually most, 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 if not all at some point go through self-sabotage and imposter syndrome and they make it way too complicated and you just simplified it it's literally if you can learn to get a couple customers then 
all you're doing is teaching everybody else that comes in to do the same thing. And you just do it more and more and more and more. And that's how you go from this level to the next level to the next level. It's like, well, I, I, I haven't made this huge income. That's okay. How do you make the huge income? You just help more people do the basics and stop getting in your own way with your own imposter syndrome, saying you're not good enough. And instead just Focus on helping more people. Hey, I know how to make $500 a month, so I'm going to help a lot of people make $500 a month, or I know how to make $100 a month, or $50 a month, or get two customers, or whatever it is, and then that will grow and expand as you go. But um, I, I don't know. I, I just love that. So where, so first off, I want to, I want to drop this again for all of you to make sure you get it. Get, get the book, themillionairetraining.com. Get, get, get the book. Don't just read the book. Don't just have the book come in and be excited about it, right? Don't feel like you're finishing the book because it's a number to say you finished a book because it sounds really, really cool. Maybe I'm just talking to myself several years ago. It's more about learning and implementing, and that's the whole point of this book. So look at this book less of a book and more of a study guide, a companion guide that you're going to write on, you're going to take notes on, you're going to implement, and you're going to learn new things as you go. I've read the Bible so many times I can't even count. And each time I'm like, whoa, I didn't remember that. I didn't see that there. When did that show up, right? Because yeah. as Jim Rohn says, right, when the student's ready, the teacher will appear. So it's it's one of those concepts that people just need to really, really understand. So I know you guys are crazy busy right now with – the book, we'll call it the book tour, the online book tour, as as you're really just getting in the word out and the impact and the influence again. And so uh, people don't know this. It's not that books are typically huge money makers. It's, it's the impact and the influence. And yes, through that, of course, they can become, but that's what it's more about. And so I'm, I'm super proud that you guys put this together and, and did this and really excited and honored that I get to come on and interview legends and, and mentors from afar that I've had. And I know we've become friends the last several years, but for me, it's these type of things are just a dream come true that I tell people I'm naturally an introvert. Naturally, you're whatever you want to be. So I'm whatever I want to be. But uh, being able to to get to know legends like this, when people say I can do it, you can do it. You're just like, ah, cliche, cliche. Look, I'm the guy that wouldn't even speak in church. I wouldn't swing a baseball bat. My dad had threatened to ground me. That's how soft-spoken and scared I was. You know, you just heard about Larry, the, the hippie with the long hair, and he went and made it happen. And so you can do this. It's a process. Everyone's got a different journey. But uh, I just want to thank both of you for coming on and, and making time. Well, thank you, Rob. Thank you. Just appreciate you having us on and uh, sharing this information with your tribe and the people that, that uh, follow you. Just really, 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 really appreciate it. Yeah, it, it means a lot to us, and and you know, I we can just go on and on about this, but, but it, it, we've tied in. We now have the LT Wealth Building Academy that serves this book and these principles in here with called the six pillars. Is today's application, okay, of that, and it's amazing. It's like um, an online university, and we have the courses, and we come on and interact with six to eight hours a month with them on the courses. They're not new courses. There's the courses. It's run, hit, catch, throw in baseball, pass, shoot, dribble, okay? What does the football teams do every Tuesday after Sunday? Looking at run, hit, catch, throw concepts. That's all they're doing. They're not looking at anything else. And it's the minute little things in here, and everything in here is absolutely, I mean, how about going on page 72 on how to employ yourself? Okay, you're probably familiar with that concept with Larry one and Larry two. Okay, procrastination, the fried bologna sandwich, because it's all told with stories. Okay, and the biggest thing is on page 110, which is what is so important to Taylor and I because it gets lost out in, this, in, in our space. People think they have to get taller to do this, or shorter, or younger, or older, or change the color of their eyes to be able to do this. And on page 110, it starts off with you're good enough as you are right now to get this. If it wasn't that way, none of this would be true. The end of our profession wouldn't be. You're good enough right this minute to be the best you are, not to be the best, not to be the top distributor in your company, not to have the double, triple, platinum uh, rank language, but the best that you can be and be happy with you being the best that you are. You don't compete with anybody else at all. 
we never would be here, any of us, if that wasn't the training that we had that came through me from Bobby and Jim that I took into the millionaire training that we captured in the book. And this is just the beginning of where we're going to take. Our, in, our profession is something I'm very proud of and uh, I'm very, very excited about. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna take this to some new levels. He still has that way of making you feel like you can walk through the wall. I mean, it's uh, he just has that way. And so I hope that I hope that you guys got what I got from what he just said. Because now I'm in, I'm excited. I'm excited about doing what we do. <laughs> hey, if you're not if you're not fired up after that, uh, not trying to be rude, but there's something wrong with you. So. Get fired up after that. I know that all of you that are tuning in are, and now it's time to go implement and make it happen. So thank you. Thank you, Legends, for coming on. I really, really appreciate it. And I know everybody else found a ton of value, and I can't wait to do a follow-up when you write your next book. Yay! Oh, it's coming. It's coming. Oh, well, it's coming. And it all... I knew it. I knew it. I just guessed. Yeah. I knew it. A new color. It all goes together, baby. Yes. Thank you so Love much. It.